Hey guys, in this example, we're going to be dealing with the graphical representations of functions. Future ones will deal with the algebraic and tabular methods or tabular representations. So let's say we're given two functions, absolute value of x plus 2 and negative x minus 4, and they're graphed over restricted domains, meaning the absolute value function doesn't go to the left of negative 6 and doesn't go to the right of positive 1. So the domain of the absolute value function is negative 6 to positive 1. And the linear function negative x minus 4 doesn't go to the left of negative 4 and doesn't go to the right of positive 3. So the domain is uh, negative 4 to positive 3. And this graph on the right hand side is the same thing again, just copied over. So we're asked to find the sum the difference, the product, and the quotient of these two functions where possible. And soon enough, we'll see what that ex actually means. And identify the domain of the resulting function. So let, let's think about notationally what it means to add two functions. So if I'm adding f plus g of x, what I'm saying is I need to find f of x plus g of x for the same x value. So if I were to take, say, negative 6 and said, okay, now wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in negative 6. So there and there, I need to plug in negative 6. Well, f of negative 6 I can figure out. That's this number here. But I don't know what g of negative 6 is. The function is not defined there. So here's where you have to be very careful. You can plug negative 6 into this function. But if you're given a restricted domain, you have to stay within it. The restricted domain for g of x is negative 4 to 3. So negative 6 is not in the domain of g the way it's presented to us. So we wouldn't even be able to do that computation. This is uh, going to be a domain issue as we were trying to find out earlier in the last video. Uh, the special circumstances are these. So if you find the domain of this one, this one was negative 6, comma 1. So the first thing we have to observe is we can only add the functions where they both exist. So for instance, at x equals 2, the linear function exists, but the absolute value 1 is not defined. I'm talking about right here. x equals 2, the linear function exists, but this function, I have no idea what it is. Uh, the, there's no dot there for the red one. So I can only add values where both functions exist. So I made a table of values here to the left. And basically I'm saying that at negative 4, they both have y values. At negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. At 0 and at 1, they both have y values. So I put them in this chart on the left. Now, and these y values... <coughs> Excuse me. The y values are just coming from the graph. So f of negative 4 means f of negative 4 is positive 2. So that's why I put a 2 here. f of negative 3 is positive 1. So I put a 1 here. f of negative 2 is 0. So I put a 0 here. And then I did the same thing for g values. g of negative 4 is 0. g of negative 3 is negative 1 g of negative 2 is negative 2, and so on. So this table on the left-hand side is basically just the x values where the functions are defined, and then these are the y values from the graph itself. And finding f plus g should be pretty simple. We just have to add the y values together. So 2 plus 0 is 2. This would be 0. This would be negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Now, I've already drawn my, uh, my scale and my axes, but here you want to think before you start drawing your axes. And you can see that here off to the right-hand side, my x-axis is not right in the middle of the page. So you want to make sure that you can actually uh, fit all your y values and your x values in the picture that you're given. Now, if we start plotting some x and y values, so now I'm looking at this x value and this y value. 
the function f plus g passes through 0, ne negative 4, comma, 2. Negative 4, comma, 2. Let me use a different color. Is right here. And then we end up at negative 3, comma, 0, which is here. And then at negative 2, comma, negative 2, which is here. Negative 1, comma, negative 2, which is there. 0, comma, negative 2, which is here. 1, comma, negative 2, which is here. So if I connect the dots, I'm going to get this linear function here. I'm going to get a horizontal line here. And this is the graph of f plus g of x. And hopefully from the picture, this makes sense as well. So if you think about it, what is the sum of the y value here and here? So if I add 2 and 0, I should get 2 as the answer. So at negative 4, I do have a height of 2. And if I add the heights at negative 3, for here and here, 1 and negative 1, if I add them together, I'm going to get 0. So that's why at negative 3, my y value is 0. And then let's look at what happens after that. So here, my y value is 1. And here the y value is negative 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And because of the linearity of the two sides, if this is 2 and this side is negative 4, the distance or the difference between them, or the, actually no, the sum of them, 2 and negative 4 will always be negative 2. And if I go one more higher, this will be 3 and this will be negative 5. So if I add those y values, even Pictorially, it hopefully makes sense that the sum is always negative 2 for those uh, four x values. All right, now the same analysis can be done with, uh, or sorry, let's find the domain of f plus g. The domain of f plus g from the picture is negative 4 comma 1. For f minus g, and, and I just copy-pasted the, the table here because it's the same x values and the same y values for both graphs. For the difference, 2 minus 0 is 2. 1 minus negative 1 is ne uh, 2. 0 minus negative 2 is 2. 1 minus negative 3 is 4. 2 minus negative 4 is 6. 3 minus negative 5 is 8. Let me just make sure I did these correctly. I think so. Forgive me if I'm making some silly arithmetic mistakes. I'm, I'm obviously a little under the weather here. So negative 4 comma 2 is going to be here. Now again, you'll notice that my x-axis is way down here. That's because my y values, when I did the computations, need to go up to 8. So to allow for my y values to go that high, I, I drop my x-axis way down because none of the differences are actually negative. So I don't need to have as much space down below the x-axis. Let's continue to graph this. Negative 3 comma 2 would be here. Negative 2 comma 2 would be here. Negative 1 comma 4 would be here. 0 comma 6 is there and then 1 comma 8 is up here so here we have this linear function here we have this horizontal line and again from the picture you can see that the lowest x value for which the function is defined is negative 4 and it's defined for all the values up until 1 and including 1 so the domain is in fact the same thing again negative 4 to 1 uh, I won't go through the setup again, but f times g and f over g. So f times g would be 0, negative 1, 0, negative 3, negative 8, negative 15. Now again, keep in mind that my y values are never positive, so I don't need a region up here. It, it would be a waste of space. But the y values do start at 0 and go all the way down to negative 15. So hopefully it makes sense as to why I move my x-axis way up high. So you want to figure out these table of values 
before you start drawing your graphs because otherwise your axes your, your graphs are either going to go outside your picture or the, the space that's provided or it's just not going to be pleasant to deal with so negative four comma zero is here negative three negative one is here hopefully you've also seen that my scale is different here each of these hash marks is one so then this is negative five I have two comma zero which is there negative one comma negative three would be here zero comma negative eight would be there one comma negative fifteen is way down here So if we connect these dots, I'm going to get these things that it's not actually a straight line. Hopefully you can see that the line actually bends as it goes down. And then this segment gets connected here and this segment gets connected here. And again, the lowest x value for which the function is defined is negative four. The largest x value they're defined for all the x values until then, so all the way to 1. For f over g, 2 divided by 0 is actually undefined. We can't do this. This does not exist. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. 1 divided by negative 3 is negative 1 third. This would be negative 1 half. And 3 over negative three-fifths. So here we have a bit of an issue. Negative four comma, I'm sorry, um, there is no y value at negative four. And this actually goes back to where the notation was introduced to us. So right here we had said that the quotient can be found as long as the denominator is not zero. So g of x, the function on the bottom, is not allowed to be 0 because division by 0 is illegal. We can't do it. And if we look at, a, at the pictures, g of x, this function right here, or sorry, this function right here, g of negative 4 is equal to 0, which is the function going on the bottom. And that does not exist, so negative 4 actually would not be in the domain of this function. We have no idea what the y value is because it's not in the domain. It means we cannot plug zero into f over g. So we can start at negative three and negative one. Negative three, negative one. Again, notice that my scale is very different here because all my y values are between zero and negative one. So I blew up that the scale to account for that. If I had made negative one all the way up here, then everything would be scrunched up within a matter of boxes and it wouldn't be a good use of my space. Um, I have negative three, negative one, negative two, zero, one, negative one third. So if one third is about 0 0.3, so I'll say it's about there. 0 0.33 is a little bit over 0 0.3. And uh, 0 comma negative 1 half would be here. 1 comma negative 3 fifth. 3 fifth is 0.6. Yeah. So 0 0.6 is right there. So this function would look like so. Oops. Collect, connecting all the line segments. Now you might be wondering what happens bit for x values between negative 4 and negative 3. And if you look at our picture, the graph does exist there. If we're dividing f by g, we're dividing this number here by this number here. So it's going to be something negative because I'm dividing a positive y value by a negative y value. And we can notice from this picture that this y value exists and this y value exists, then this y value exists, then this y value exists. Then, and we can keep doing this until we get from negative 4 down to negative 3. But because g of negative 4 is equal to 0, I can't include that. What we can say is that the domain 
will exclude negative four, but it will include all the numbers to the right of it until you get to one. So even though we can't graph it, we don't know what the function will look like to the left of negative three. What we can say for the domain is that it will be from negative four to one, but notice that I excluded the negative four by using parentheses. And at one, I'm including it because I have a very nice solid dot at x equals one. And uh, that's about it. So hopefully, one of the things that you're able to observe from here is that when you're finding the domain of the sum, the difference, or the product of two functions, excuse me, it's the intersection of the domains of the individual functions. So if we look at, for instance, this last example here, the domain of f was negative 6 to 1, and the domain of g was negative 4 to 3. If we were to, say, graph this on a number line, negative 6, negative 4, 1, and 3, Negative 6 to 1 would be this distance, or that interval. Negative 4 to 3 would be this interval. And the overlap is called the intersection. That's where the two sets meet each other. And that, in fact, was the domain of the sum, the product, and the difference. So if you look back here, the domain of the sum was the intersection, negative 4 to 1. The domain of the difference was the same. And the domain of the product, in fact, was the same as well. So if you need to find the domain of the sum, product, or difference, all you have to do is find the domain of the individual functions and take the intersection of them. See where they're both common. For quotients, we have to be careful. It's still the intersection, but it has to exclude the values of x where the denominator is equal to 0. So here you can see that the denominator was equal to 0 for negative 4. When we plugged in negative 4 into g, we got 0. So the intersection is from negative 4 to 0, but negative 4 cannot be included because that's where the function in the denominator is exactly 0. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll see you in the next video.